it's quite literally a matter of life and death being able to maintain a patient's temperature. Hypothermia slows everything down and it's a very fast killer. In inland Alaska temperatures, it's a faster killer than in other places. I am Bo Pratt. I'm a critical care flight paramedic in the United States Army. Up here in Alaska, essentially, that turns into a lot of civilian and military local calls in the back of a UH-60 Blackhawk. We definitely have a lot of outdoor enthusiasts in inland Alaska. You'll be looking at snow machiners, you'll be looking at cross-country skiers, backcountry skiers, uh, people will be out ice climbing, accidents do happen. If you get stuck somewhere where you're no longer able to stay mobile in inland Alaska in negative 30 degree temperatures, then hypothermia obviously starts to turn into an issue as well, so time is extremely of the essence. The environment changes so much. You can know somewhere in the summer, it doesn't mean you'll know it in the winter. Once you get 12 feet of snow throughout a winter in a certain area, the landmarks are not the same. It looks like you're in a completely different place. any sort of shelter that would be able to keep you out of the wind. There are some patients that we can't get there for three hours, and once we get there, weather dependent, we might not be able to get that patient until the next day. If there's any sort of wind, we're worried about losing heat. Convection is a very huge issue in mountains in Alaska or on glaciers in Alaska. You get huge gusts of wind. Any sort of emergency beacon is strongly advised. That is something that will come straight to us. It is a lifesaver on multiple accounts.